Hello and welcome back and today we're going to continue looking at mobile applications. It's something I like to touch on every year to year and a half because a lot of the applications for network attached storage do change a lot over time. Today we're going to look at the file management application from QNAP, otherwise known as QFile. It is the application that allows you to access your NAS remotely and uh, utilizing a mobile device from you know uh, an iOS or Android device allow you to browse your files and download and upload and share and effectively control all of the files and stuff that you've got to hand. You can see there you can list multiple QNAP uh, devices at any given time. I've got four NASes here in my local area network and of course you can play around with a number of the settings about how you interact with the device whether you're using your own individual ID or adding more. On top of that, you can change a lot of the background settings about how much data the application holds. Do you want to have a secondary lock for it so you can actually have two stages of um, access to the NAS via the mobile app? And there's lots of little changes there you can choose with regards to the limits of the files that you can upload or download using the application, whether you only use Wi-Fi so you don't use your cellular data, if you're going to be browsing photos, do you want to cache some of the details in the background? And even ask if you are going to use third-party players to play back music or video files, which ones you want to use. There's lots of configuration there, even before you enter a single NAS system. At the bottom of the screen there, you've got a download folder that allows you to um, access the files that you've downloaded to your local um uh, phone but on top of that you can change that directory so all of the files and folders that you um, download go directly into the directories of your phone device that you want and then of course you can add any available NASes on your local area environment I've got a NAS here that's connected by two LANs and as well as that you can either enter the details manually if you choose or use your QNAP ID if you created an internet level access that will allow you to access your NAS remotely with your internet um, access QNAP ID when you set up your QNAP for the first time and then you can interact with your NAS over the internet as well as you would over the network utilizing this app. So the first one we're going to go into is the 451D2. I've already entered the login credentials but if you wanted to enter the login credentials manually uh, you can go in and they're entered in this way and there are advanced settings as well for more secure logins and whether you want it to be saved or not. But again, there's lots of little options there you can change. Once you log into the NAS, it looks a little bit like this. You're seeing the file management panel and you can change the view if you choose. Uh, and again, you can cast this to multimedia devices if you choose, where if you are utilizing particularly multimedia outputs or projectors or sound systems, you can make sure to have network media players connected and castable from this app. You don't need to just use photo, video, and music specialized applications from QNAP. Now the options here on the side, as you can see, uh, you've got the main directories, if you've got shared folders, or the primary directory of your volume will be displayed here along with your favorites. If you're uploading files, whether you have shared links already enabled, or if you're going to add them, or we're gonna do some file sharing later on in the video, but also you've got the download folder and background tasks that can be happening on the NAS in case you're wondering about utilizing too much or to you know, affect the bandwidth negatively to connected users. And of course, those settings that we've already gone through, but they add a few extra options once you're logged into the NAS, such as uh, default actions for when you copy, paste, and more, as you see there at the top. And you can have them to always be the case that it asks you first before you proceed and do anything. So first and foremost, let's go into the multimedia folder there. We've got loads of files there from the Plex Media Server videos that we've been running. So for example, let's go into the movie section there. There's the matrix, the one that we've looked at a few times before. And we can have a look at some of the options that we have here open to us. So we can go ahead and download this file to our local phone. If we choose, we can share a copy of this file with people or share a download link. We can stream this to connected network devices on the area, but of course we haven't got any available. You can then encrypt this file if you choose, compress it into an archive, a zip folder. You can transcode it. You can do so many options from this file management tool here. Now, say for example, we wanted to share a download link with someone to this copy of the matrix. So at the top, we can rename the link if we choose, 
We can say that it's only available for certain IPs if we choose. We can say whether we only want it to be accessed via SSL. We can enter a password if we choose, and we can set an expiry date for when we want this link to die and not let anyone use it. So if we go ahead and create that download link, we've now created this downloadable link, which we can then either share with the applications that are on our device, or we can just copy it and send it manually if we choose. And if we head back into that primary menu and we go into the share settings, we can see that our new share will appear on this list. And again, we can alter that as we see fit or go through an email list or just edit it as we see fit to make sure that it is the right we want it to be. So say we want to make it a timed link instead of having it as a free for all unlimited link, that is something we can do. So if we make our way back into that multimedia folder, we're gonna go into there and we're gonna go ahead and lower the volume because I know for a fact that we're not gonna be able to play back a lot of multimedia in today's test because of YouTube. But if we go ahead and play that file, it will ask us if we want to transcode that file and we can save it if we want, or we can just click the original file and then ask us which player we want to use. Now, a lot of NAS um, hardware providers I've seen over the last 10, 12 years do tend to rely on third-party playback. So it's nice to see that um, QNAP have rolled in their own player here. So again, you can't hear the sound. I've deactivated the sound on this because of YouTube and copyright bots. But again, we can skip forward, back and forth. I could rotate the screen, but I think that would knacker the screen recording a little bit there for you guys. But we've got the file playing there in the background. And at the top of the screen, we have the ability to cast it to available uh, network devices, which unfortunately we don't have. We can set 360 mode, where if we're utilizing a 3D headset, as you see there, the screen turns into this 360 vision, where if you're using um, a 360 headset, on top of that, you've got the option for Google Cardboard. So those of you that use Google Cardboard specs can activate that setting. That's still available now. Uh, if we activate deactivate 360, and we've got those streaming options still. At the bottom of the screen, we can go into the settings where we can change that quality of playback as we see fit and transcode ad hoc as we see fit. And that's really it. Mute, sort of volume options as one might expect. It's kind of as you would expect from something like this with the added benefit that we can do whatever we want. And it's all being done within the file management tool and using QNAP's own video handling program, not relying on a third party one like MX or VLC. They are supported, of course, but it's nice to know you don't have to rely on them. If we head back, we can go to the photo menu, we can select an album, and we can see lots of files and folders here. So let's go for a fold, we'll go for a picture here. We've got uh, these three here. We can go along and from here, we can find out more information. So on the right hand side, we can download the file, we can, again, compress, rename, move, copy, stream it to a local multimedia device. And again, you've got those 360 options. You've got those uh, Google Cardboard options there. You've got all of those settings, all of them pre-built in for you to play with as you see fit. And as VR headsets and VR entertainment has grown in popularity, although arguably not at its peak, it's nice to have those options ready available. Next, we can look at music files. And again, music files are gonna be pretty much the same thing. If we go to Oasis there, we can go ahead and play a file and it's playing within the Q file application. It's not utilizing anything else. As you see there, it is playing back in the notifications bar. We've got all of those options for streaming, for casting to other devices. They're all built in. So it's nice to have those options once again. And as I say, this really is Kind of a very very good example of file management there's slight differences when you deal with pdfs and word docs um, a lot of those will be downloaded automatically but i know changes are coming on that score but as a file management tool go goes it's very straightforward it's nice and detailed and although it could maybe do with a bit of uh, an uplift in terms of the visual style um, i think that's really the only criticism i have for it it does the job it's supposed to do. It does it very, very fast. It's incredibly responsive. And even thumbnail generation is arguably lovely and quick happening there. And if we sort the views, we can change it to large scale images. And we can go 
for my colleague here we can ignore that and again scrolling through nice and quick these have all been done and if we go for a zoom there we can pinch in and see quite a lot there and even downloading files very very straightforward and it's all done on the fly as quick as you're going to need it so this has been my review of qfile for qnap in 2020 Got to say, there's been a few tweaks in terms of responsiveness since we last looked at this about a year and a half ago. But ultimately, I do think all of these changes are certainly for the better. And now with the inclusion of the options of QSync folders being bundled in to the file management application alongside your client devices, there's a lot to be said here in terms of improved user interface. They just need to make it a little bit more visually appealing because it's a little bland on the eye there. But that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Click like if you did and click subscribe to learn more. I will see you next time.